Good morning, guys. Welcome to week six, day one of the Armor of God study. Um, today, I'm just going to quickly talk about salvation. But before we do, let me quickly pray before we begin. Father, I thank you for the person who is listening this morning. I thank you that you have brought them into this moment for your purposes and your plan. Thank you that you have provided me this opportunity to share my testimony, Lord, and to be a blessing to others. I pray that I will represent you well, Lord, where I say something that is not of you or that may not be true. Father, I pray that you replace it with truth. I trust that you are working in the life of the listener, Father, and you are calling them every day towards something new. Whether they are saved or not saved, Lord, whether they understand salvation or they don't, Lord, you are calling them today towards something thank you for your unconditional love thank you for the gift of jesus and i thank you for this opportunity and this moment in jesus name amen so good morning i just wanted to quickly share my um, testimony and just some of the things that god did in my life and hopefully that'll encourage and inspire you on your own journey so when i was a child you know i grew up um, mainly around hindu relatives my dad always said that we were christians because he wanted me to understand which religion i was supposed to be following he didn't want me to be confused when i was around eight years old my dad's friends um, gave me a bible they realized i had a, a children's bible that was filled with stories but it didn't actually have the word of god in it so they gave me a Bible. I learned through going to a Presbyterian primary school and through, you know, having this Bible that I can trust God's word to be there for me when times were hard. My parents didn't have the best marriage and they weren't always happy. And I quite often relied on that Bible to give me a sense of peace and a sense of hope and to bring me closer to God. When I was around 13 years old, um, my family moved from Trinidad to the Cayman Islands and it was really hard. I was bullied a lot. Girls laughed at my hair, they made fun of my skinny legs. Um, you know, it was really hard. I was going to school with boys who were, you know, not very godly and exploring their sexuality. And it was really um, a battlefield to choose every day that I was going to be kind and work hard and learn to sidestep, you know, boys with the wrong intentions. So, um, when I was around 17 years old, I was praying and God showed me one night when I was reading my Bible that he wanted to work in my life in a new way. I was reading in Galatians and I was feeling good about myself, um, that I was not, you know, a bad girl. I got good grades. I knew how to um, behave and God showed me that I actually did not have the fruit of the Spirit and when I read love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God convicted me that in my life, I was a good girl and I knew how to behave, but he wanted to give me joy. He wanted me to have, you know, all of these things that I didn't really have towards other people. I didn't have that sense of, you know, whatever was happening, I was just gonna be filled with life and filled with happiness and filled with gratitude. God showed me that I, I allowed so much hurt to accumulate in my life from bullying, from my parents' divorce, from, you know, being away from my family and relatives in Trinidad and, you know, just going through a lot of homesickness that it changed who I was. And God wanted to bring me back into knowing him in a new way. So he was going to not only bring me back into discovering him again in the word, but he was also going to lead me into salvation. And that night when I was, you know, alone with God, with my Bible, with the Holy Spirit, I decided that I was going to change the way I lived. And I asked God to please help me because he showed me I couldn't do it by myself. God also showed me over the years that there was a battle happening in my mind for my identity and he showed me this Hebrews 4:12 that says for the word of God is alive and powerful it is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between soul and spirit between joint and marrow it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires and God showed me that not that going through that was needed in my life. I There was a battle in my mind that was causing hurtful situations or when hurtful situations happened, it caused me to think and respond in ways that internalized hurt. Hurt was becoming a normal part of my life and God didn't want me to absorb everything happening around me. He wanted me to focus on Him. He wanted me to become the fruit of the Spirit, all of that love, all of that joy, all of that peace. God wanted me to have all of that. 
so I, I just ask you now to really think about you know where God may be needing and wanting to work in your life where he wants you to see that he wants to divide soul and spirit he wants to take you away from the world the soulish things and he wants to give you the things of the spirit he wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit he wants you to live a life led by the Holy Spirit he wants you to pursue an identity in him and salvation is not just what happens when you die when you die is a very long time after that it's eternity so it's not a small thing to think about what happens when you die at all but god also has a purpose for you here on this earth he also created you for something on this earth and he's depending on you to carry it out other people are depending on you to take up that salvation and to come into a loving relationship with a holy god remember he created you he knows everything about you he knows the things you don't say. He knows the things you haven't realized yet about yourself. So when you come into a relationship with a holy God, one who is perfect, one who has created you for um, his purposes, one who has you know, knowledge of your past, knowledge of what's going to happen in your life tomorrow, next week, in six months, when you rely on him to lead you and guide you, he will bring you into things that are perfect and wonderful and it won't be perfect according to your human standard standards it'll be perfect in his eyes so i ask you to trust that the god who is all-knowing he's always present and that he is loving you from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head he knows everything that he has made you to be i ask you to trust him now i pray that you will um you know seek the lord in new ways and you'll find a deeper meaning for life right now in him and whether you have already accepted christ as your savior or you have not god is calling you today towards something and i pray that you take up that calling so i'm going to pray real quick and i wish you a wonderful wonderful day father i thank you for the person listening i thank you that you have called them into salvation you have called them into knowing a love knowing a joy knowing a presence knowing an adventure father that they could not have decided on their own and you are calling them into supernatural things things that don't please their soul lord but things that will bring them into a deeper place things things that are spirit pleasing things that are miracles things that they cannot explain that Lord, there's nothing in entertainment or nothing on social media, nothing from their friends that can explain what you can do in their lives when they trust in you. And I thank you, Lord, that right now you are doing a perfect work in the lives of the people who are listening. You are doing a perfect work in my life. And I pray, Lord, that we learn to just focus, Lord, focus on that space and that place that you are working on Thank you for joy. Thank you for peace. Thank you for friends who will make us laugh today. I pray, Lord, that there is holy laughter and holy jokes. And I thank you, Lord, for parents um, and friends aligning, Lord, to support us in our salvation decision and in our decisions to continually walk out our faith in you. We thank you for our leaders tonight. We thank you for everyone, leaders today. And we thank you for everyone um, associated with our church and this Bible study, the armor of God. And we pray, Lord, for wonderful, wonderful things to come out of this journey. We love you and we thank you, Lord, and we will never turn away. Today, Lord, I pray that today is the day you make a change and we will never turn away from you, Lord. We look to you with new faith. Let the enemy not steal what you are planting in our hearts and minds through this study. Let the enemy not steal, Lord, what you have given us so far and what you have for us in the coming days and weeks. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your perfection. We thank you for that gift of Jesus who died on the cross, Lord, who paid for our sins. We thank you that, Lord, his work is perfect, his work is holy, and that you will complete it. In Jesus' name, amen.